In eight days of non-stop travel, we hit all nine provinces of Sicily with my Sherpa, Melissa Mueller, who just finished writing her tome on Sicilian cuisine for Rizzoli. It's a very Sicilian. old, antique Sicilian recipe. You and I need to see outside of the main tourist areas. The unknown Sicily. The little spots, the crevices, the little mountain towns that are just undiscovered. I drank fresh goat milk, then tasted the cheese, had a family picnic, Amazing canolo, mm. black bread, drank lots of really good wine. That's beautiful wine. But, folks, we're not done yet. I'm Mike Colomeco, industry insider. Been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week, we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals Family of Brands offers all natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites. From our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian durum wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at Cento.com. We're in the middle of Sicily visiting a winemaker named Fabio Sirici of Fuedamantini in Agrigento. He produces some of the most authentic, purest Nero d'Avila. These vines are all grafted from his old vine stock going back hundreds of years, and he's farming organically too. We'll also meet his friend Pino, who's going to make us some fresh ricotta cheese over a wood fire, well, that's hot. and a crazy extruded pasta. Pino is uh, making the ricotta cheese. You're right, you have this milky white the water way. left, the yeah. way, yeah. Yeah. and this is what ricotta, meaning the second yeah. ricotta, ricotta, re Recut. recooked. Well, that's hot. He's done doing this all by wood, which is crazy. Attention. Hot, hot, Attention. Hot, hot. And you can see he's forming it into the basket, he's draining it again. Perfect temperature, very slow, very controlled, warm, delicious, <laughs> really good. <laughs> Better than Bona. Better. Your, Fabio, your friend Pino, besides making cheeses, has a lot of talents. And this is... The name is Arbitrio. Arbitrio, Arbitrio is what you call this. Of this machine. There's a very specific dough that goes in here that's just semolina and water. It's extremely dry, hard dough. And the only way to force it through anything is with this much pressure. And these bronze dyes, and if the dough is going to start its life going through here, and then it's going to end its life coming out this end with a hole down the center the whole way. And if you've never had pasta made with this way, this torqued way, it's really something. This is a really dry pasta. This is, if you're used to making egg doughs and working them, this does not look like it's gonna be set. Look how hard that dough is. Gnarly dough. At this point in the proceedings, Pino needs even more torque. So we go for the extra long four foot handle to get the job done. What Italians will do for a good pasta. Si, si, si. <laughs> he said, this is what you guys do at home? <laughs> she dances around him. <laughs> you have these beautiful extruded bucatini. That's what we talked about, that bronze dice. It kind of scuffs up the outside of the pasta and creates all these gorgeous little pockets and textures for it to just attach itself to more sauce. Cooks super fast. And the flavor of the flour is beautiful flour. We're walking in your vineyard, and it's early spring, and I'm looking at all of this chaos, and it's a little bit of a mess, yeah. but I like it. Yeah. 
This is alive. It's not just a vine and nothing growing, no bugs. So talk about what you're doing here. We are in organic cultivation. So I am afraid when I see the vineyard too much perfect. It's right. I love to see the vineyards like this that are alive and there's little bugs and snails and things moving and things crawling and the soil is vibrant. It's an Erudabola uh, bush vine, Prefilossera, 85 years old, 90 years old. And uh, probably here there is a biotype of uh, Nerodavola, one of the purest. Now I'm beginning to almost get forest floor and leather and that this thing. Yeah, that, that that, that's yeah. You don't feel the alcohol. You don't no. feel it because it's in a blind tasting, there's no way I'm going Nero with this. No, no. way. And it's so soft on the palate. I'm not getting the kind of cherry I'm getting from Pinot Noir. I'm not getting those notes. And yet I'm getting old world. I'm getting Italy, but I've got no idea where I am right now. I am not married, but this is my wife. <laughs> We're going to turn this into a, a Craigslist ad. Ladies, Ladies, if you're into great life, beautiful countryside, wonderful wine. Wine and, and a, roses. And a man that loves wine and you. Not necessarily in that order. And life. But maybe he's your man. He's your man. And I love his wines. Chef Angelo feels that Sicily offers so much in terms of the quality of the ingredients that it's best for him to try to make what he can from what he's learned internationally here. So he's not making a cuisine that's just Sicilian or making revisited dishes of traditional old Sicilian ones. He's making his own cuisine from what he's learned through his experiences. So here with the chef in the kitchen, he's going to do a demo of one of the dishes we just had, which is a veal wrapped in pancetta with a, a, a chocolate sauce, which is yeah. crazy, from the town of Monica. Mm -hmm. Big veal loin wrapped in pancetta, celery leaves, thyme, rosemary, sage, marjoram. Nero Davila? Nero Marsala. Marsala. Vegetable broth. Chocolate wow. with cinnamon, cinnamon and hot pepper. Chocolate with hot pepper from Modica. Yes. It's wildflower honey. Chocolate and honey. It's gonna go in the oven. Deglaze the pan, now it's got that herb element. Pick up all that fond. Strain it back in so you don't lose the fond, all that flavor you have left in the pan. Old chef's trick. Wow. 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 <laughs> he likes it. It has just a little touch of that spicy That's pepper that comes fun. through, but not too much. Yeah, just a little warm burn at the end. It's good. All right, he's got some foie gras going. He doesn't like it too overcooked. See that? Foie gras. Doesn't like a lot of color either. So, for example, the French foie gras coming in, there's no foie gras being made here, but for him that's something that's important to combine all the elements of what Sicily has been in the past with what it is today. Oh, mm. you can actually smell the herbs. Smell the sage, smell the rosemary. Yeah. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. He's definitely sense. someone who is looking at every flavor yeah. and every ingredient and intensifying it. A little microplane of the chocolate and the garnish. And because it's Italy, EVO. Where did they get the idea for the chocolate in the sauce? Very old recipe, very Sicilian. old antique Sicilian recipe. Mm. And of course the butter, the brown butter in it, it really has a nice nuttiness. Mm. <laughs> the brulee on the foie gras is just really... And brulee. You're one of her favorite chefs in Sicily, maybe yeah. the number one. Yeah, it's true. Vero, vero. Grazie. Grazie. Next stop is the town of Modica, the epicenter of artisan Sicilian chocolate making, with a history going back centuries to the Spanish colonization of Sicily and a link to Mexico and the Aztecs. We have the Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century. So coming from the New World, they brought chocolate here to Modica. The popularity of the chocolate here took off. Up till today, there's several, several factories that are in the town and nowhere else in Sicily. Tell me a bit of the history of the story. You're sixth generation? Yes, I'm the sixth generation of this family that started, perhaps, the family came from Spain. During the 16th century, chocolate here arrived as a food. 
like uh, in Mexico. We like in Mexico, yeah. in antiquity. Yeah. The style of the chocolate is in an Aztec style. So it's not fully conched till it's completely buttery smooth. It has almost a granular texture to exactly. it. Exactly. It almost looks to me like it's not done or it's broken or like sugar that's crystallized. That's as far as they take the conching. Okay, look at that. Look at look the at consistency yeah. of that. We work at about uh, 45 degrees Celsius during all the process. So the sugar never melt inside and that's why this strange texture, this grainy texture in the mouth. And uh, we do not have cocoa butter, so you have less fat in the mouth with this kind of chocolate. This is to get it smooth, even out, all the air out, and so you can see the, how much smoother the tops are now. Okay. <laughs> That's actually how they make every bar that's sold here. It's not that he just did this right, for a show. Right, it's not a factory this out is, back that's no bumping yeah. and going grrr, exactly. that's it. So after a couple of hours, it's been chilled down, and this is what it looks like. These are the bars, and now we'll pop it out for us. And then these will get hand-wrapped, glued, sealed, and sold. Or we'll eat them. Let's give it a bite. Just look at the, the way you can see the... I know. The sugar, really. In here. So you see, this one's 50%. It's very sweet, a lot of sugar, and you can see the big chunks of sugar. Out front, they've got all those samples. Yeah. I went 70, 80, 90, 100, and it was just incredible, incredible. And then the salted one? It's fabulous. Beautiful. We're talking about chocolate as a food. Right. Another Spanish recipe, because the name is some panatiki, from the Spanish word empanadas and panadillas. Ah, that's what it looks like. And uh, a strange combination because I'm made with chocolate and beef meat inside. <laughs> chocolate was used as a preservative inside beef. and could save the meat for a long time without fridge. That's why. The pastry is really fine, it's sweet, and it tastes like chocolate. I mean, I'm not getting any meat in this. How cool is that? It's six more generations. Yeah, thank you. Every chance I get when I travel, I have to hit the open food markets to see what's going on. Here in Syracuse, they have an epic one. It's a crazy, crazy scene with loads of noise, bustle, color, and character. This is a great market, and we've, you've enlisted the service of someone who's going to be so useful for us, a chef. Chef's name? Chef Giovanni Guarnieri. Restaurant? Restaurant Don Camillo. And the chef knows all of the vendors, oh, yeah. they know who he is. Let's just take a look, because you and I did a little pre walkthrough and I'm like, wow. Wow. This guy has only tomatoes, every different type. This is what he recommends for sauce. These little guys. It's a very brief season for these. That one would be more for a salad when you have the green. There you are, Mike. You look at this tomato and you think, well, it's a little bit green on the top. It's not ripe. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be that good. good. It smells insane. So New York has a Mulberry Street, or literally, it's famous. But when was the last time we saw mulberries in the market in America? We just don't see them much. White mulberries, regular mulberries. He actually just said this is the same variety, just more mature. The mulberries were introduced during the Arab period because the silk was a big industry. Bluefin tuna just caught last night, like everything else in these waters is. Not, there's no fresher than this. You eat it now, you're gonna know how good it is. Tomorrow you better come back and bring him a coffee as a thanks. <laughs> and tell all the Americans. Look at last night. Line caught swordfish. Look at the eye, look how clear the eye is. Clearer than my eyes most mornings. Beautiful. <laughs> last night, tonight, morte. <laughs> That's right. Hey. Gracias, Mila. So he's filleting anchovies here. Rips the head off, pulls the guts out, and now he's pulling the bones out, pulls the backbone, done. Head goes off, guts go out at the same time, opens it up with his thumbnail, pulls the backbone from the tail out, and it's finished. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. From May to the end of September, these mussels are consumed and they're farmed in the waters right here outside of Siracusa. There you go.
you go. <laughs> Mare. Okay, it's good. ocean in a shell. You said this is one of Sicily's top cheeses. We are here still in the market at the Fratelli Burgio store, which is right at the corner entrance of the market. And we have a little selection that the family has prepared for us today. Olives from the western side of Sicily. We have a caponata that they make interestingly without eggplant. He said that the eggplant just sucks up too much of the oil and he likes it this style. It's, it's very good. We have the dried cherry tomatoes. And then we have a prosciutto from the black pigs in the Nebridi Mountains. These black pigs live in a natural environment in the forest of the Nebridi Mountains. And their diet is basically consists of the chestnuts that fall on the ground, of pretty much anything. Look at that fat. I mean, that's just, that's butter. And the fat itself has been analyzed as very healthy fat because of the diet of the pigs. Omega-3s. Lots of them. And I've always liked this cheese. Saffron, black pepper. The selection he has here is from all over the island, not just from this area. The chef, thank you so, so much. Grazie. He's got to get back for service. Yeah. 30 years in business to 30 more. Grazie. Mount Etna for years produced boatloads of lousy, overcropped Nero Davila that was shipped in bulk to the mainland for blending. Fast forward to today, and it's become one of the most exciting and dynamic wine regions on planet Earth. I love Etna wines, drink them all the time. This is my first visit here, so I am stoked. We'll meet with sommelier slash wine consultant Benjamin Spencer, an American expat who lives here now full-time, and get his take on the scene and raise a glass with Eugenio Vivera in his tasting room in Guangalosa. Cheers. Cheers. So we're in your Vivera, halfway up Mount Etna. Yeah. That's 10,000 feet above sea level. We're about 1,200. That's the ocean down there, and the wind is whipping. Once the uh, land heats up in the center of the island, it really you know, it rises, it pulls all of those cool winds off of the ocean, and that's what you're feeling right here. For Vivera in particular, they're an organic producer. Right. It cuts down on the need for fungicides. Spraying, all the stuff that we exactly. normally have to deal with in places where it's foggy and still. The terracing allows wind breaks and it creates growing areas where, where they wouldn't normally have that. This is an engineering feat and it kind of goes back to the Greeks. The Greeks brought with them a lot of great farming practices to create agricultural areas out of these steep slopes. What they did was they took the stones out of the vineyards. Walls would be created, they'd be filled in with the extra rocks and those would connect the small vineyards to other vineyards. And so growers were constantly working together and transmuting across different areas uh, of the mountain. Here, from one neighbor to the next, you really get to understand an expression of the soil, of the areas, of the possibilities of Etna, and it is endless. It's like terroir on steroids here. Here you have a lot of the best attributes of the best wine growing areas in the world. You've got elevation, you've got intensity of light, these really natural soils with a lot of diversity. There's been millions and millions of dollars invested here in the vineyards and in the technology in the wineries. A lot of research with the local producers in the ancient vines, in the ancient growing methods. And the potential here to experiment is astounding. Now we're off on a ferry to spend a night on one of the Aeolian Islands. In short, paradise. We're on Salina. In the Aeolian Islands, there's seven of them. Behind me in the distance is Stromboli, which is actually another active volcano. I am in love with this place. I mean, we were at Etna the other day, which is an active volcano, and the wine's incredible. <laughs> What's well, not to love? I just wish I was here for like three weeks and not one day. It's paradise. Mountains, cool nights, hot days, beautiful water. We're here because there's this really nice, I don't want to call it a bed and breakfast because that's really down selling it, but that's an, an inn with a restaurant. 
The resort is called Signum. It's family run. Mom and dad found it and still oversee it. Their daughter, Martina, all of 25 years old, is the chef. And there you go. That's Sicilian oregano she just threw in there. Yep. That's everything for the dish. Letting it, she's letting it finish in the pan like all good chefs do. It's like 80% cooked in the water, 20% in the pan. Adds a little pasta water to loosen it up, get some starch in there. If that pasta and sauce don't get married in the pan, they can't elope yeah. to the dining room. There you go. Put it that way. That's what I tell my guys. Oh, and que bel profumo del oregano. You smell it coming at you, that it's oregano. So it's, you can't imitate it. There's no, nothing else to use to get that aroma. Oh, eggplant and shrimp. Okay. Great combination. She does simple, clean food with a nice touch of sophistication. So grilled eggplant, perfectly cooked shrimp, little glaze of Campari, microgreens. Nice touch. Beautiful. This is an interesting dish. We have some bread made with black squid ink making it a paninero, and it has cuttlefish that's seared, a nice pea, spring pea cream, and some coffee dusted around the plate. So when I first heard caper ice cream, big question mark. And now I'm eating it, and I'm like, <laughs> it's bloody good. It's excellent. I don't know how she balanced all that salt. I think she wanted to come up with something to represent her island, and this is where the capers, capers. are produced, so. Caper ice cream, who knew? Martina. She's great. She's great. She's a beast in the best sense of the word. She's good. New York, watch out for her. <laughs> Boy, I hate to leave, but we're not here on holiday, folks. We have a show to do. So after less than 24 hours, we're back on the road again. When the town of Shaka, it's about an hour outside of Palermo on the coast of Sicily. And like so many Mediterranean fishing towns, this is kind of what it does for existence. This is a tourist town, it's not a beach town, it's a fishing town. Most of these boats are night boats. They go out at night, they come back the next day. So it's four in the afternoon, we've got a lot of boats coming in. Right now there's mainly four or five fish that they're catching. These are per se nets. They drop nets in at night with lights, they catch whatever they can and they bring them in. We're seeing lots of merluzzo. They look like sardines or anchovies, but they're not. Different species, these merluzzo you just Bread them, flour them, fry them, and eat them. Fritura, they call it. I love these kinds of towns because it's like the essence of the fishing industry. This is all these guys do. It's Mediterranean fisheries, per se net fisheries. It's a sunny day in Sicily, so what's not to like? We're at a really beautiful resort on the coast of Sicily. It's one of Rocco Forte's boutique hotels, London-based hotelier. This is a real jewel of a property. On the beach, vineyards around it, olives around it, oranges around it, and Fulvio Angelini, one of the most famous Italian chefs, is the consultant chef here, comes in, does the menus. We're gonna have Chef Fulvio do a demo, something pretty simple, so he's gonna pare something down. Local shrimp, local beans, it's an amazing local orange little orange reduction that's going to turn into an emulsion with olive oil made on the property. I think I'm going to like this. May I? Yeah, thyme, mint. It's Incredible fresh. It's a completely different, super strong. It's super strong. Yeah. These kind of oranges, so beautiful, they are from, from the States. Yeah, I know. Washington. <laughs> I know. That's Washington. I know. It's a stupid job that we know very well. Cleaning vegetables. I clean a million of these just to stay in the kitchen near the chef. In three minutes, we have an ice bath here called Bain Marie. Every single day, I love to imagine to learn something. Mm, that's true. And I learn a lot in this magic land. I learn a lot in Sicily. All the chefs, they say to make this, okay? True to take out, yes. I hate this. I don't like this. You kill this one. You, you open this. You take the whole one. Yep. Look, I do like this. I take it the opposite side, and in the same time. Oh, this it comes out the line, the intestine line. You must respect your food. You must. We 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 know we are cook. Try. Good luck. Bingo. I got lucky. <laughs> Our orange sauce is. Uh, like an emulsion, verdura olive oil. Yours. From the, from the olive of our hill. And I love this. This is the kitchen. This is our job. 
to work with the heart, not just with the hand. With the eyes, with the ears, yeah, never with just with the with hands. With heart, yeah, with soul. So we cook, just set, boom. 10 seconds. Hard to argue with simple and good. Great shrimp, great Eric Vare, great emulsion, bingo. Three ingredients in your route. Chef Fulvio Pierre Angelini ran the two-star Michelin Gambero Rosso in San Vincenzo on the Tuscan coast for years and was one of the hottest chefs in Italy before walking away from it all in 2008. Sure, he's a tad eccentric, but he's got loads of passion and the talent to back it up. Chef, thanks for coming down here from your busy, busy, busy schedule. Oh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here with you. I just would like to cook and see the sunset. And my kitchen was just in front of the sea. And I'm, I was happy as could be. <laughs> cook and sunset. Loved Sicily. What a magical place. Totally amazing food and wine scene. But the next time I come, it's no cameras, please. I'm going to come back for a holiday. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals Family of Brands offers all natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites, from our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian durum wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at Cento.com.